is in the southwest corner of the open space. The open space is kind of a U-shape. If you noticed on the maps, if you saw the maps, it's a U-shape, big U-shape. And it goes from here north a ways and then cuts across and then goes north again just to the east of that first mound, rocky mound there. It goes up to the rim and across to near where that cell phone tower is and then comes back south. And what we're going to do today is, is walk about two miles or so, kind of at a diagonal. And we'll be, at the end, we'll be about midway from east to west in the open space. So we won't see it all, but we'll get a good idea of what it's like. And there may be rattlesnakes. We have seen them out here. This open space was purchased November a year ago last November and it was purchased with the TOPS fund money and the TOPS fund money comes from city sales tax. One tenth of one percent of every city sales tax dollar you pay goes into a fund specifically for buying open space. Anyway, there's about seven, a little over, I think about 700 acres there. There's 522 acres. The grand plan is to have somewhere between 3,000 and, well, I've, we've speculated up to maybe 4,500 acres that would be continuous. You'd have a trail along the base of the bluffs. You'd have one continuous as possible along the top of the bluffs. And then you'd have spots where you could go up and down from the bottom of the bluffs to the top of the bluffs. So, let's keep going. Yeah. Corral Bluffs is on the southern rim of the Denver Basin. And the Denver Basin is basically a big basin that was formed when the Rocky Mountains pushed up for the second time. They're in the process of pushing up for the third time now, but during the second time, they were about 10,000 feet taller than they were before. And that 10,000 feet over millions of years eroded and eroded. Most of it went down to the Gulf of Mexico. But because there was the Denver Basin, this big basin next to the Front Range, those layers also went into the Denver Basin and filled it up. And so we have here a fossil record of the million years of, let's see, 65 and a half million years ago to 64 million years ago is the fossil record here at Corral Bluffs. So the lower part you're seeing in these layers here is about the time when the dinosaurs went extinct. 65 and a half million years ago was the KT extinction event, is what they call it. A big asteroid, like a five mile wide asteroid, hit near the Yucatan Peninsula and caused a, just a huge natural disaster. And the whole Earth was covered with this big cloud from the asteroid. And it caused the dinosaurs to die off. It caused most of the plant life to die off. But what survived were the smaller animals, the smaller animals that could hide or have food stored away. And those are the types of fossils that they're finding now at Corral Bluffs. They're also finding crocodile fossils, turtle fossils, because it was very humid here. Humid, wet, it was like Costa Rica. Palm trees. Um, there are also many, many fossilized trees here. We've been working with Dr. Kirk Johnson at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and he calls Crow Bluffs one of the best fossil forests in Colorado. I wanted to explain how Corral Bluffs got its name. Many people think, many, actually many people pronounce it Coral Bluffs. Many people think it's Coral Bluffs, but it's really Corral Bluffs because in the late 1800s, cattlemen used this area as a corral. Specifically, Colonel Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving, they were two Civil War veterans and they had, they were cattle ranchers down by Fort Worth, Texas and they would bring their cattle from Fort Worth up to Denver to put them on the railroad. And then they, they would go either west for new ranches that were forming or they'd go east to feed people back east. They'd go to the gold miners in the, go in the hills. Um, they'd go to the Indians on reservations, whatever. But they would bring their cattle up on the good night loving trail. You may have seen this, signs for this if you had headed down 
like south, if you're heading down to Pueblo on I-25 and stop at the rest stop, there's a sign there that talks about Charles Goodnight and the Goodnight Loving Trail. So they would bring him up here and take him over to Jimmy Camp Creek where there's a, a spring-fed creek, water them over at Jimmy Camp Creek, and then bring them here for the night. As you can see, there are kind of natural corrals all around. It makes it easier for them to keep the cattle all together. And they would bring two to 3,000 cattle at a time, so it was quite a large number of cattle. This creek bed that you're standing in is one of several dry creek beds. Dry when it's not raining, I should say. <laughs> because when it's raining, some serious water can come down here. And with that water comes whatever's in the bluffs. Fossilized wood, arrowheads, pieces of fossilized bone. So as you're walking, keep an eye out because people have found things. And if you find things, we'll We'll GPS it and photograph it and then um, report it to the uh, geologists or archaeologists or paleontologists, whoever it may be. Another thing I wanted to point out is this yucca plant. You see the stuff hanging on for dear oh. life up there and it's, it's taproot coming down. Well, that's a short taproot. <laughs> These yucca were really a wonderful, useful plant for the Indians. And those roots can get 10, 20, even 30 feet deep. Well, those roots, the Indians would use to eat, for one thing, they're edible, and they would use them for soap. Another word for yucca is soapweed. Now, we think that, I mean, the Arapaho and the Cheyenne lived around here, and we found traces of them, arrowheads and such. And we know that they would either corral the buffalo into places like this where they couldn't get out or they'd run them off the edge. Mm -hmm. We don't know that that happened here, but it very well could have. Mm -hmm. But the Indians that lived here, they found traces of archaic period Indians. And over at Jimmy Camp Creek, they found traces of paleo Indians, which go back to 40,000 BC. The archaic period is from 6200 BC to 200 AD, so they're a little bit more recent. But this is the, basically the end of our tour, and we're just going to head back.